Advaita means not two, just one. So what this really means? It simply means that everything that we see, hear, or perceive is essentially consciousness. It means that consciousness is everything. The divine consciousness is everything. And everything is consciousness. In essence, essentially, in the ultimate analysis. You can say that, well, this object is matter, molecules, then science tells us that actually it is energy. And then, if you keep going, science doesn't go there yet. You will find that essentially, farther down the line, energy is ideas. And ideas are consciousness. So everything, including this, is consciousness. Why is this? Before anything was created, there was nothing. Before the universe was nothing was there except consciousness. Consciousness was there. But consciousness is not a thing. And therefore there was no material to use it as a base to create the universe. There was nothing. So the only option was to produce the stars and the planets and things from nothing, from pure consciousness. So pure consciousness turned itself into the things. That is why Taoism says nothing is everything and everything is nothing. The nothingness turned into everything. Every object is essentially no thing, a no thing. So, this is philosophy, you would say. Well, yes and no is more than philosophy. This is a truth, is the ultimate truth about everything. And it can be realized. What does it mean that it can be realized? It means that this truth, this ultimate fundamental truth about the universe and you and everything can be experienced and realized at an intuitive level, a level of certainty or a level of absolute certainty. It's a realization what you're looking for, not a philosophy. The philosophy is useful. It points to the realization. 
that you are looking for, you are actually looking for the realization. This realization comes to people sometimes before they even hear about these things, before they, they learn about the philosophy, the words, and it suddenly comes to them and sometimes is kind of scary for them because they were not prepared. You likely have heard these things before and you are listening to them once again. What's the use? The use is that in listening to them and practicing them, practicing these words the way I'm going to explain, you are as a little self, fictitious but some somehow there, you are communicating to consciousness that you are serious, that you really want this realization, this ultimate truth, and that you are serious about it. When you practice these words, when you dwell on these words, when you use them as pointers to attempt glimpses of that truth, you are communicating seriousness of intent. And that attracts the grace of the divine. That is what attracts grace. And what is grace? Grace is that which also comes from consciousness, from the divine, and blesses you with this amazing realization. There are also other realizations, of course. This is the ultimate one. Ultimately, you want to realize Advaita. You want to realize that everything is consciousness and consciousness is everything. Use this pointer. Everything is consciousness. To follow the pointer with your intuition, with your feelings and begin to sense the truth that is behind the words, behind the pointer, so that you communicate to the divine seriousness. And then, when the time is right, it will come to you, like a thief in the night, as the Bible says. So remember, use this pointer. Everything is consciousness. You can also use the pointer as a question. What is all this? What is all this? All of it. All of it is consciousness. Pure consciousness. So consciousness is everything. The good and the bad the beautiful and the ugly. However, in the dream we pursue beauty and goodness. 
in our thoughts we transcend the polarities in our actions and speech we honor the divinity in everyone by offering them respect and love <laughs>